Matter is all around us. Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. And the amount of space something takes up is called its volume. So all matter has mass and volume. And all matter is made of tiny particles like atoms and molecules. These atoms and molecules are incredibly tiny. In fact, they are so small that it's hard to even imagine how many atoms it takes to make up something small like this copper block. So to help us understand what we're talking about, we're going to use some simplified models that show how objects are made of particles. Using models can help us understand and explain difficult concepts. Here I have a block of copper and a block of wood. So imagine that these blocks are made of particles. Our models of these blocks might look something like this. But notice, the particles in the copper block are very close together while the particles in the wood block are spread farther apart. These blocks take up the same amount of space, so they have the same volume. But there are many more particles squeezed together to make up the block of copper. So the copper block ends up with more mass in the same amount of volume. When we talk about how much mass is found in a certain volume, we're talking about density. Density describes the amount of mass that's found in a certain volume. But we can also think about density as how close together or far apart the particles are from each other in a substance. The particles of the copper block are much closer together than the particles of the wood block. And that makes copper more dense than wood. Whether a material floats or sinks depends on its density. Here I have our copper block, our wood block, a rubber eraser, and a piece of cork. I also have an aquarium full of water. Water is a form of matter, so it's made of particles too. So let's compare the density of these objects with the density of water. Based on our model of density, which substances do you think will float in water, and which substances will sink? Take a minute and discuss that with your classmates, then I'll be back to talk about the answer. The particles in the copper block and the rubber eraser are closer together than the particles of water. That means that the copper block and the rubber eraser are more dense than the water. And because they're more dense than the water, they sink. The particles in the wood block and the piece of cork are farther apart than the particles of water. So because the wood block and the piece of cork are less dense than the water, they float. So our block of copper sank in water, but here I have a small piece of copper that has much less mass than the block. Will this small piece of copper sink or float? It's important to understand that objects sink or float because of their density, not their mass. Copper is more dense than water, and even though the small piece of copper has less mass, its particles are just as close together. The block of copper and the small piece of copper have the same density. So because this small piece of copper is still more dense than the water, it sinks. And here I have a larger piece of wood that has more mass than my smaller block. But the particles in this wood are just as spread apart as they were in the smaller block. So because this piece of wood is still less dense than the water, it floats. You'll need to know the relative densities of some materials and whether they sink or float in water. So remember, metals, glass, and rubber sink. That's because these materials are more dense than water, while other materials like wood, cork, foam, and many plastics are less dense than water, so they float. I hope this video has helped you understand density and how that relates to things sinking and floating. Keep up the great work. I'll see you next time.